Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined as always by a guy, Gary, we double recorded. I didn't come up with a second one. I was in the uh, shower this morning, and it took me a while to do the Blintz one, and I didn't come up with a second one. Fuck. Blitz, Gary, blitz, give, blitz, yeah, blitz. Uh, there's only think. so many things with that word in it. I know. Um, uh, welcome to a podcast that has finally discovered the Blatoris. Everything to Guppy. Okay, so you're so that that's a rhyme with clits. Yeah, kinda. All right, yeah, kinda. Yeah. That's yeah. that's in in poetry they call that a kinda rhyme. Yeah, it, it's an approximate rhyme for my uh, final good time. time. Yeah. yeah. Um, boy, week two. What a feeling. Yeah. No, buddy, it's okay. They don't. Got to remember for the listeners, not week two. There was a week between. It's pretty. That's crazy to think about. Like no time has passed for us, but anything could have happened to them. Whoa, man! They might have had <laughs> amputations. <laughs> is that, okay, is that weird? That that's where my brain goes first. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Uh, Vietnam hippie. Um, yeah. <laughs> Civil War hippie. Whoa, man! <laughs> this has gone gangrenous. Oh man, brother against brother. Bummer. Gnar- <laughs> gnarly. Tourniquets. Oh, man, I'm fighting for states' rights. <laughs> the, Ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Wrong side hippie. Wrong side hippie. <laughs> yeah. Damn Confederate this is, hippies. This is the Battle of the Second Manassas. No, yeah. no, man. Come on. <laughs> no, no. Come on. Full run. Full there run. are many economic reasons why. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Okay, well, I just wrote a song about it. No. Uh, I just reached for my ukulele, but I forgot I put it back. Oh, uh, that's. Can't continue that bit. <laughs> what a blessing. I know. It's, it's, you know. Sometimes uh, you take the W. You know, we take those. Yeah. Uh, take those. It's early in the episode to have already dodged a bullet, but, well, man, <laughs> I dodged a bullet. Oh, nope. 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 The, uh, nope. That's, that's going to yeah. get amputated. Yeah, it's uh, the, uh, nice. Um, Never let Calvin piss on my flag. The uh, I like the idea of enjoying amputations like um, flatlining. Okay. For uh, for amputation hippie for Civil War hippie, gosh, I didn't know how that sentence was ending. But yeah, I yeah. Like it. <laughs> the, uh, you know, like flatliners. I mean, that's um, a, like a like amputation fetishism is definitely like a Cronenberg. That, that does happen. I've also masturbated to a movie about it with a uh, boxing Elena, so I I know it very well. So, yeah, um, what? yeah, uh, boxing Helena. We talked about. Boxing I know. I, I, I've I've heard of the movie. I don't think I've heard of you masturbating to it. Oh, I did it as loud as I possibly could. I thought they could fucking hear it in Texas. Um, no, it, it's a, a, there's is this a reference. Is this a song or is this a real story of a thing you did to your dick while doing things with your eyes? I, it's not even enough of a story. It happened multiple times because it was on HBO and it had it titties in it. It happened multiple times. <laughs> it, was, it was like there were naked ladies and teenage Gary uh, literally it wasn't even any port in a storm. It was. The world is constantly storming and everything is a port. Um, so yeah, the, 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 on a fucking dime would, would drop it and jerk it. And, uh, if, if you saw a titty, even if it was about a weird psychosexual drama about amputation fetishing, uh, you betcha that's, that's time to go. Just think if we'd exposed you to the movie crash, the good one, not the bad one at that age, maybe Uh you'd have a driver's license. I might have a driver's license. I might have gotten so into cars and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And just, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, you didn't, when you were a teenager, you weren't so unrelenting. Like, it what, didn't just take, you know, oh, there's a pretty curvy mannequin. Let's go. Gary, I wasn't masturbating to a lot of mannequins, no. I just, I, I, they talk about the spank bank a lot, but imagine a bank that will take any object. Like you don't deposit money, you can also deposit like twigs and Gary, rocks and like. Gary, did you did you, at any point during this period of your life did you see a rock that was kind of it had like a little pebble on top of it and it was kind of looked like a boob and then you just masturbated to the rock? No, but I have masturbated to a statue. Uh, a pe- looking at a statue, not outside. Like what? Not like at the, the Statue of Liberty, who is super I, hot. I understand that you've walked back from the most extreme version but this is fucking you're indiana jones 
and you <laughs> stepped off of the rock that just falls into the abyss and stepped onto one that like causes a guilt. What statue did you masturbate to a picture of? It was a naked lady. Which it was, one? It was, I don't remember. There were like Gary. Like, it'd be amazing if it was the Venus stat- de Milo. It'd really bring a lot <laughs> together a lot of your teenage interests. I don't think it was the La Fossa de Milo. I think oh, it was God. the. <laughs> no, I don't think it was Venus de Milo. I think it was like another kind of like a, a like a maybe it might have been a mermaid statue. Like now I'm thinking about it, it might have been just the boobies on a mermaid statue. It's <laughs> <laughs> like look at those three D boobies. Let's go, Gary. You I know? don't think you ever get to make fun of people masturbating to hentai ever again. I, how often do I make fun of people masturbating to hentai? I think a lot in your head. I, um, no, I have contempt. I don't. Ma- I don't yeah, make fun contempt. of them. Contempt. No. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay, because because they're not teens. Yeah, like you're a teen, you masturbate to anything, and then you grow out of that shit. It's child behavior. Gary, how did you find the? Sta- did you go looking for Gary? How did you find the statue? Pretty sure it was like in a picture. It was like in a magazine. It might have been in a National Geographic or something <laughs> like that. Uh, <laughs> like, Pretty sure it was in a magazine. <laughs> and like, you know, I, I had pornography magazines as well, uh, oh. multiple kinds and stuff. But back then, the way that testosterone affected my body, uh, you're just like, you'd be walking along, having a day, thinking normal thoughts, and then just like, oh shit, dude, that statue is looking pretty good. I wonder what it would be like if that came to life. I, I was basically uh, Robert Pattinson in the lighthouse all the time. Sure. Yeah. G- Gary, uh, I'm really imagining like 13 year old w- you, not me. Yeah, we're different people. Uh, turning through a textbook and fi- coming across what I believe is called the Willendorf Venus, and just being right. like, "Let me look that up Hello. and see if that's the one." Hello. No, it's not. Uh, I <laughs> okay. promise you. Uh, it'd be great if it was. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm not super into the Willendorf Venus. No, you don't. Um, that doesn't get your dick hard. No, it might have at a time, but not yeah, now. that's that's what I'm suggesting. The, um, the, uh, and it wasn't like an immediate thing where I like had to drop everything and do it like in public or whatever. Right. No, no. I'm not in school and just like jerking off under the desk. Uh, you know, it'd just be like, oh, okay, that's going in the bank. Like I'm depositing this, this barrier twig, like it's money later. This is going to get used as, yeah. Amazing Gary. Absolutely. It was cool. Amazing. Yeah. In some, in some ways I, I miss, uh, that unrelenting horrible energy uh that i had all the time just an uncomfortable itchy feeling constantly yeah that grim vitality yes it it, great that's the perfect way to put it uh a certain like uh you know not juve de vive but like mort de vive uh that i had yes um what's the small leech do all the speaking of small leeches small leech yeah um, this is the, uh, the drown or the, uh, water area. So the, uh, the downpour guy, and these are the leeches. It says it chases you continuously. This doesn't charge. It doesn't go on the right angles. This guy no, will come kinda, at you from, rigg- yeah, it just kind of wriggles towards you, wriggles at you. Um, and it can swim over gaps, which you cannot go over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it goes through rocks too. Yeah. It's like it flies. Uh, it's on the water there. Um, we're not done with chargers though. Yeah, uh, we're generally Don't just in the, in the water. water. What? Yeah. What was that? Uh, Why are you making fun uh, of my singing? No, it was me making fun of Dave Matthews. Don't drink the water. Like he's I got that song. Dave Matthews sounds ex- identical to your Alanis. It's very similar to my Alanis or my Jewel. Uh, they all. Oh, can I get a little Jewel? Yeah. Who will save your soul? Yep. Didn't believe it. Didn't mention a van. Van. Oh, Jewel lived in her van. Oh. Why do you know that? Everyone knows that. Why don't I know it? I think you might have been too busy jerking off. <laughs> I tried to jerk off to the Who Will Save Your Soul video. A, a few lot times. of people knew that Jewel um, lived in her van for a while. Uh Jewel Van. Uh Jewel Van. Uh who is Jewel Kitcher married to now? Okay, yeah, it does show up on her Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I wasn't reading Jewel's Wikipedia. 
You know, I don't, I'm not I, super... I feel like uh, this was a well-known thing that was mentioned on things like MTV, which I didn't watch because it was for bad kids, but also probably pop-up video, which I did watch because it was for annotation. It was for kids. good kids. Yeah. yeah, for kids who really liked uh, Douglas Adams and Terry Pratchett. God, I love pop-up video. <laughs> like, oh, pop-up yeah. video. I would watch anything on pop-up video. Um, oh, I'm Google image searching. It's trying to show me Jules Van. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Yeah. Um. It's... Boy, can you imagine how much that would go for at auction these days? Yeah, probably about, uh, I would guess, the blue book value of the van plus $2,000. <laughs> <From like, laughs> yeah, 1991. Let's ask the general. Uh, yeah, a, a van from 34 years ago. Um, it's, it's, the... Gary, hey, Gary, Gary. Mm-hmm. It's Vantage. <laughs> it's yeah, vantage. I gotcha. Yay. I got a laugh out of that nothing joke. Yay. It's vantage. Here's you can try it's vantage. Um yeah. Uh next up, the small maggot. It's small. It's small. He's a little guy. He's not the same size as these chargers. Yeah, no, um, just a little maggot just kind of uh wriggles towards you. Yeah, wriggles towards you. We'll do contact damage, but isn't excited about it. Yeah, a real a real Rob Riggle type. Yep. Uh man, Rob Riggle. Gary, um, yeah, what do you think about Rob Riggle? I like Rob Riggle. Uh really? Yeah. Because yeah, of I don't, his football? Because of his football? No. no. Uh he was just like a, a funny guest star in a lot of stuff. He was on a bunch of episodes of Human Giant. Sure. Yeah. I just remember Now, like, Gary, I want to be very clear, we're not confusing Rob Riggle and Rob Hubel. Yes. Yeah, Rob Riggle okay. is the big guy. Yeah, uh, he's the one big of those guy like, whose head looks like a tombstone. Yes, every once in a while, there's a guy who is like looks like he's built like a quarterback who ends up in, yeah. as a comedy nerd, but um, also does do sports commentary. Yes, and is a retired marine officer. Yeah, kind of got that. that whole vibe to him, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. No, I like. I, I he was a, a guest star on many Human Giants. He's the guy they uh, the mind freaks showed uh, mind illusions to. Okay, to yeah, him. that that no. that sounds about right. He's a uh, the very funny bad guy in the first 21 Jump Street movie, which is a pretty funny yeah, movie. I think so, too. Yeah, he's funny. I, I like it when a, a big, strong guy like this plays against type. There's a guy in my old band scene, this guy named Marty, who uh-huh. was like five foot tall, but like the, one of the strongest people I've ever seen. Like okay. huge muscles, like looked like Wolverine. And he was just like hung out with all of us, like anemic and unhealthy indie shits. Like he was constantly like bench pressing things. And then he, we'd all get together and talk about pavement and shit. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Gary, are you sure you're not confusing him with Rob uh, Hubel? I might be confusing him with Rob Hubel or, you know what, Rob Riggle. Okay, yeah. Fuck. It was probably Rob Hubel. A lot of times mm-hmm. when I'm trying to think of who a person is, it's Rob Hubel. Yeah. He gets around a lot. Strays Rob Hubel. What? Um, He's in the movie Strays. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the Why do you know who's Bill in the Ferrell's... movie Strays? Because I just clicked on the link. I was okay. looking up Hubel facts. It seemed unlikely that you were going to have gone and seen Strays. In Strays. So. I didn't see Strays. No. Do you think he's in Strays because of his long running role on uh, Children's Hospital? I think that's probably why. Do you know? Hey, this is hey. barely relates. Good. Do you know the, the plot that, that All Dogs Go to Heaven? Do I know the plot of All Dogs Go to Heaven? Yes. I saw it several times as a child. A dog is an inveterate gambler who yes. dies. What? Who's run by... I, I did not know the plot to All Dogs Go to Heaven. I'd never yeah. seen it. And Liv explained it to me yesterday. Like, they all have a boss dog, and all the dogs get together and gamble, and the dogs own a kid? Yeah. That, that's a way weirder movie than I than I was led to believe by the trailers. He, he dies, is given a magical pocket watch yep. uh, that if it runs down, uh, he doesn't get to go back to heaven. He steals he the pocket instead. watch. Yeah, he steals the pocket um, watch. From, so that's why he can uh, never go back to heaven. He steals from Gabriel. A sexy, sexy poodle? Yeah. A sexy angel? poodle angel dog. He steals it and it's to go free this little girl who dogs own. Yeah. And the main dog is named Carface. Yeah, yeah. I believe yeah. it was the origin of the trope uh, big-lipped alligator moment. Hmm. Uh, that could be the case. Because there's a big musical number from an alligator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. I love learning about uh, things. Yeah, you don't see a children's movie. 
Yeah. See, Gary, I, I feel like the thing about All Dogs Go to Heaven is it's a it's a that's from Bluth. That's a Bluth yes. movie, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Very the much thing so. about that is that it now it, at the current point of my this is you can understand me perfectly if you understand that I am no longer interested in All Dogs Go to Heaven. I am entirely and only interested in Oliver's comp Oliver Company. Oliver okay. Company. The Disney one where they were like, you know who should star in our dog movie is Billy Joel. You know who should star in our uh, talking dog cartoon as the main talking dog is Billy Joel. Billy Joel. I like that. As I get older, I am more Don Bluth pilled. I'm because really mad that Billy Joel didn't star in more animated movies. I, I mean, I would like that. It'd be great. I would like to have an entire Billy Joel animated universe. Like we we all like the guy who plays Asterian, right? Yeah, yeah. What if it Billy was Joel Billy Joel? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if it was Billy and, Joel? And just like, yeah, I just like, I guess we'll bite you. I, I don't know how to do a Billy Joel impersonation. I don't know. Me what either, man. Like. How does he talk when he's not singing? I was, I was standing right there. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, this feels awful. I didn't like um, helping the the, the druids. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. That's yeah. not how he talks. To be clear. He's got Who like knows? a New York guy. He's like a New Jersey guy. Hey, I hate helping nope. druids here. No, not even remotely. No, that's probably not true. Uh, he probably sing Gary, all of his no, lines. No, we can do this. We can, we can do this. Billy Joel Astorian. Okay. I need you Up, to down close your eyes. Nope. Don't, we You've don't start singing. You've been hanging with a dumbish dick. Okay. Gary, nope. we're not doing fucking Weird Al song parodies. We're trying to get you to embody Billy Joel. I need you to not sing. I need you to close your eyes. I've, okay, my eyes have been closed this whole time. Really? No. <laughs> okay. No. It'd be weird. Like, yeah, yeah, they're always closed the whole time yeah. that we podcast together. I have Google Glass, so I, so I just read you. about Rob Riggles in my mind. Yeah. Um, okay, Gary. All right, you've closed yep. your eyes. Yep. I want, inside your head, without opening your eyes, I want you to open your eyes, okay? Okay. You're seated at a piano. You're looking out at a packed house at Madison Square Garden. It's the 50th night that you've sold out in a row. And you know that these people are going to fucking lose their minds when you tinkle out the opening strains of scenes from an Italian restaurant. But before that, you need to address the crowd and say hello to them. So you open your mouth and you say, Hello, New York. Perfect. Oh, my God. Gary, you did it. Gary, I, that actually worked. That actually worked. I, I was very taking that very seriously. Yeah. You painted a nice picture, man. Like yeah. I was just like, yeah, I am gonna do pretty good tonight. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, when should I do piano, man? First or second oh. encore? <laughs> this, you know? this, you, that starts the encore, I think. Yeah, I, it'd be a great, great beginning for the encore. Everybody's Gary, can I tell you? I'm, I'm gonna even. be very Scott Ackerman for a second. I would fucking okay. kill to see Billy Joel live. I, you know what? I would go. I, I, I like Billy Joel less than you do, but like mm -hmm. last chance to see. And I would have a lot of fun with you. Like we've only been to one concert together, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it was fun. <laughs> the, it was um, fun. Yeah. I, 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 and this would be like an event, like the people watching, like seeing people stand up and groove dance. Like, you know, maybe there's a retrospective partway through. Yeah. You know, I want to see what the merch table looks at at a, like, looks like at a billy joel concert in 2024 overpriced is my guess oh like yeah the home of the 75 dollars sweatshirt yeah oh you know? gary if you, you think you're i i'm gonna check billy joel merch prices if you're getting okay. a sweatshirt for less than 100 i will be shocked that would be a little bit surprising especially if it has like it's you, you know has the tour information here it's the idea I mean, it's not of billy a tour, joel it's a residency oh that's true it's weird that there even is billy joel merch now that like there can be yeah, Billy Joel merchandise 2024 auto completes. It feels like we just have all of it we're going to get. Uh, like, I'll tell you this right now. If you like, on the Billy Joel website, the you get $50 t shirts. Yeah, uh, the least you're paying is $45 for a t shirt. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Billy Joel Sting uh, 22424 24 Tampa, Florida event poster. It's got a picture of a ship on it. You cannot, you could not pay me to go see Sting. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, do you know Sting is touring under the name Sting 3.0 as like with a trio? No, that's amazing, and I love it. Yeah. Gary, I need to tell you something. Okay. On Billy Joel's apparel page. Yep, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I need you to scroll down until you see a big question mark. Okay. I, I flipped over to uh, apparel. I was just on 
Ordinary yeah, no, this things. is under apparel. Although accessories might also be quite good. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, it's the Billy Joel Mystery Bundle, and it's, it's normally a hundred dollars, but it's half off. You're it losing money by mix not buying past <laughs> unisex T-shirts with a minimum retail value of a hundred dollars. What, Gary? This is such a good deal. This is yeah, two yeah. shirts for the price yeah. of one. It, it's, it's only in small, only in small. Yeah, that's they're not offering this in size. <laughs> you can uh, get a lot of fucking uh, Billy Joel t-shirts, and not one of them looks good. Oh wait, never mind. This is we didn't. Gary, mm-hmm. Gary, there's a we didn't start the fire long sleeve, and on one of the sleeves it has all the lyrics of we didn't start the fire printed. Oh, that's pretty good. It's only sixty dollars, Gary. How do I not buy this shirt? <laughs> you got a birthday coming up. I do. Um, oh my god, that would be. Oh, uh, I actually kind of like that shirt. <laughs> What's on your shirt what sleeve? Turn the lights back on. Bullshit. Like, what are these? Are these later songs? I I or like names of tours or albums. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. What kind of accessories can I get? Yeah, I was also wondering um, about that. All right, we got cups, a mug. Hats. Got a forty dollar beanie. This guy can get fucked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, good lord. Oh, uh, Gary, this tote bag must have a comic. A- yeah, this is a comic actually drawn by Billy Joel. Uh, the turn the lights back on comic. Uh, hmm. Did I wait too long to turn the lights back on? Uh, oh, and there's two little. Uh, there's there's a guy facing away with a huge ass, or he's facing forward with a big sloppy gut. And yeah. then a lady walking away. Oh my God. This Billy Joel, 1990 Yankee stadium Navy hat where the Yankee <laughs> logo is BJ <laughs> black koozie for the nylon curtain. That's exciting. Yeah, I like that. $7 that's $7. Koozie. That's a re- that's a reasonable price for this as well. Uh, uptown girl uh, tote bag. You go down and it's just CDs and then stuff. Yeah. That's obviously like red bubble posters. Shit. Yeah. yeah. You know, official red bubble shit though. Yeah. Gary, I would, Okay, there are keychains, but there's not like a pendant. I want like a Dracula pendant, but it tells people that you really like Billy Joel. Yeah, that'd be cool. Gary, we are currently at two monsters done in 22 minutes. Billy Joel pendant does autocomplete. To what? Uh, (laughs) Let me see. Billy Joel concert ticket necklace. Um, it's, It's one of the concert stubs preserved in a pendant. Is this like Etsy shit? Uh, this is from Don Josephine, which is a website. I don't know what their deal is other than that, though. Uh, $98 or four interest free payments with Afterpay. Yeah. Uh, I could... mean, we could just buy uh, some. This is Surprise Billy Joel 2024 concert ticket, personalized keepsake tour ticket, customized music ticket souvenir, digital print. So this is just. I found on Etsy. What I think is just the image, a scan of a Billy Joel concert ticket. Yeah. That someone is selling for $5.32. A bargain. I, I'm on Etsy as well, looking up and seeing uh, the Billy Joel candle. Um, yeah, like there's a, a lot going on here. Uh, it's, it's It'll always be like a votive to me. Ding, 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 ding. That's good. Or does it smell like Billy Joel? <sighs> Uh, Billy Noel, Joel, signature Billy Joel, Stevie Nicks tour shirt. Billy Joel okay. album cover ornament. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got really excited for a second because I, I, I typed in what does Billy Joel smell like? And I got this smells like Billy Joel candle. But okay. it turns out there's just some Etsy person who just makes candles and uh, then puts a label on them. The, this smells like and then you put in whatever artist name you want. Gotcha. That's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. I want to see the signature uh, candle line from him. Oh. Slate's got a 2009 piece called The Awfulness of Billy Joel Explained that's never getting clicked ever. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, um, yeah, this this is uh, the opposite of... Oh, Billy Joel's shit. great. He's very sad. Uh, I find him very depressing in a kind of compelling way. I mean, that's the whole like, idea. Yeah. Billy Joel's plans yeah. for horse stable raise concerns about manure smells. <laughs> Billy Joel plans for the horse stable. His plans about manure <laughs> smells. Oh, the whole neighborhood smells horsey, and we're all in horsey hell. Gary, why don't 
let's throw this whole podcasting thing aside and just become a two man Billy Joel parody act. Okay. Can we Billy buy and this? Joel. You need to change your name to <laughs> I need to start going by Billy, which I hate. Yep. And you'll need to change your name to Joel, which sucks. Yeah. Um, and we had to buy this autographed microphone that we use at every performance. Oh, you know it smells like a beer, buddy. I know it smells like a beer. <laughs> They should make uh, Billy Joel candle microphone candles. Yeah. Like beers. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. There's monsters time. still. I don't. We've only done two this time. There's. <laughs> dozens it's hard to do that many left. monsters. It's Gary. It is hard. To, but it's just the idea of Billy Joel Edmund. gifts. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm just thinking Billy Joel gifts. Like, there's just a lot of fun things you can put after Billy Joel and then put into Google. Uh, whereas mm-hmm. I just typed in Billy Joel gifts. Okay. It's a lot of classic Billy. Billy Joel vampire. Uh, that's all vampire weekend. Billy Joel collabo stuff. Boo. Why were you typing in Billy Joel vampire? I just thought maybe it'd show me something cool. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> reason. A very unflattering picture of Billy Joel. <laughs> I mean, there aren't that many flattering ones. No, but this is also very special. Here, let me throw this at you. Uh, this, to me, is a good one. Yeah, where's this coming in at? Yeah, it's coming in uh, GChat. This is good podcasting, man. I don't know. What this is this is great like. podcasting. Yeah, this is like classic podcasting. Yeah, look at this guy. I don't know. I just... Yeah, it's not coming through, man. I'm not seeing oh. it. Oh, uh, that's you put, my you fault. Put it, you... I there we go. Yeah, um, I, mean, I mean, that's just his face, man. I don't know what I to know. tell you. That's what he looks like, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like, great. I thought it was going to be like he was going to be a silly costume, but no, it's just like a 70-year-old uh, man who's yeah, on the heavy side. He looks like he ate on a snowman. Um, I mean, what's he going to do? Wear a full beard? Yeah. I don't think he grows that. He's had a full beard before. He might have lost it, I, though. I don't think. I, I guess maybe he, he did for a while. Yeah, okay, Gary, don't yeah. yell at me. <laughs> the, he he has his teeth are so good okay he God. has had yeah this beard didn't look yeah no he looked okay with a full beard most men do. i think so yeah i I think so oh um, i got somewhere he's got a uh a really big beard and i don't like that that's a little bit too much yeah what a beautiful teeth this man has i mean they're good I, he takes when you're rich himself. like you just get to, to have your teeth good you know but it still hurts, you know? Teeth teeth, teeth money. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, Billy Joel's daughter. Gary, we can't. Ooh, I lie. can't have you seeing a picture of a woman. You might <laughs> the, um, go full she, Venus of Willendorf on me. Yeah, I'll never Venus of Willendorf on the podcast. That is the guarantee. Um, I don't believe you, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's okay. I just felt it was important to say it out loud on record. Yeah. I got a little picture uh, of Billy Joel. You got this picture of Billy Joel holding his Grammy? Yeah, it's very cute. He looks kind of sad to have a Grammy. It's it's a very Billy Joel look. Yeah. Yeah. I wish my Grammy was still alive. I also just uh, Google searched Billy Joel frowning and nothing comes up. Oh, here I we go. Just got, okay. All right. Phew. Yeah, I got an angry picture of him. Phew. A lot of these, I would say he's smirking. Yeah, he does. He smirks a Oh, lot. damn. Greta Thunberg rebukes Billy Joel. Here he looks like Paul Giamatti. The, that's him with his daughter. Uh, and I just, uh, this picture, he looks like Paul Giamatti, the one I just sent you. Oh. Um, Paul Giamatti could play a good film. Billy Joel in a, uh, like a later era biopic. I mean, yeah. Paul Giamatti after could play years. anything, Gary. Don't fuck around. Yeah. Like Billy Joel, the after years, where you go through that cave, the piano man cave over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, is that like a Plato's cave you're kind of doing? No, I was doing the after years. How it oh. has two caves and you go through them over and over and over because it's a horrible game. I uh, Oh, is this the Final Fantasy after years? Yeah. Okay. Gary, you're the only person who's played that, unfortunately. Cole has. Like eh, four times only or something. Said. Um oh what is the uh, small leech or what is the uh the level two charger do? Yeah, there Gary, we we've only done two monsters so far. We can't do one of them again. <laughs> well, we that start would over. be too recursive for Guppy, and it would yeah. also be too recursive for Guppy. Yeah. Uh, level two charger is just a bigger, fatter, slower charger. Yeah. 
uh, cla- I relate to level two charger. I'm a level two podcaster. Yeah, but you don't. Uh, you can't change your trajectory while charging. You're no, you're no, 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 full no. Speed ahead. I, I well, full speed is doing a lot of work on that. It is the yeah. the the 100 of the speed. Yes. Uh, so if we're measuring by that, then yes, full speed. And then Gary, uh, we have a leech uh, that science has yet to prove whether it's safer or not than regular leeches. Yeah, the L leech. He, well, I was going like E leech, like uh, cigarettes. It was like I was thinking joke. of the El leech, like El Barto, the uh, graffito tag. The Barto. Yeah, the Barto, El Barto, that Bart used to put all around on season like one and two of The Simpsons. Die Bart die. Not die Bart die, sadly. Uh, what does this guy do? What was the last time Bart caused any real trouble? You watched those later season Simpsons. I have seen Bart- some later Simpsons. He still does some trouble. Uh, not as much trouble though. They they Is really he don't in deep deep trouble. He's he doesn't get. They're not really deep deep consequences as much. Okay. There is one, there's a later episode where he does get deep, deep consequences where his parents kind of wish him away. And then we see what their life would be like without Bart. But then a Bart shows up anyway as an orphan and like ingratiates themselves into their lives. It's real weird. Like modern Simpsons is strange. Yeah. They love um, to do a magical episode. They, this, I mean, they don't feel magical though. They feel the new ones just feel like weird storytelling now. Like, they're not like, oh, let's go to medieval times where the here's what Professor Frank would be like if he was a wizard. It's not like that with these ones. They have done those, though. I've seen they those. They do. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a that's a huge, like, mid-2000s thing. But the newer ones are no. So that was the last time I saw that he got in deep, deep trouble. Uh, so much so that his family wished he never existed. Simpsons. Yep. I'm Henry Gilbert. And I don't know who Will Hughes is. <laughs> I never will. Um, yeah, I'll just, never who? I, God, I just want Senpai to notice me. Yeah, well, the, uh, you know, uh, next time sing karaoke better in front of him. <laughs> yeah. Right, if I killed it, yeah. different life, right? Different life, you know? Uh, the E-Leech moves around the room slowly. If Isaac's in the line of sight, he charges at him uh, in the closest cardinal direction. That's what all of these fuckers do. Does this one just not ever re-chill, though? Is that the idea? I don't remember. It's Gary. There's a lot of fucking monsters in this game. And some of these descriptions don't help me. No, not uh, even a they, little they, bit. They will. They then will charge indefinitely at Isaac, not stopping at objects. Okay. There we go. These That'll are, as, that makes sense. Cause this is an ascent enemy. Isn't it dumb that we're looking at the big monster page, but if you click on any of them, it takes us to another big monster page that has one more sentence. <laughs> Yeah, that has so if you click on any of these, it takes you to their category page. So, yes. uh, which is in itself for this one, chargers are a more advanced form of maggots. So I can click over to maggots, see all the maggots. But then there's only two maggots. I don't know that I uh, yeah. agree that this is an advanced form of maggot. I think the maggot yeah. is a devolved form of a charger. Devolved form, sure, like the gun from Mario Brothers. The um, or yeah, it's just I that band you like. Yes devolution uh we got another interesting enemy here though we got another one that's a power-up we got blood puppy Gary, i'm thinking about my favorite mark mother's boss songs and i don't think devo rates on there <laughs> really i mean rugrats yeah, theme, man. i like devo more than like the rugrats theme bum, 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 I, I mean i bum, like the life aquatic bum, 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 soundtrack more than i like the rugrats theme um what ping island assault no thank you now ned's theme or no, yeah. Gary, you just like uh, Portuguese covers of. I mean, I do uh, like that, but I also, songs. I mean, I do like that, but I also like the, the, the instrumental songs on that. Um, I love the Life Aquatic soundtrack. We both love the Life Aquatic soundtrack, Gary. It's probably the best soundtrack uh, of the Wes Anderson soundtracks, although yeah. I'd ma- also make an argument for Royal Tenenbaums. Yeah, also really, really good. Which is also the, a fantastic uh, Mark Mothersbaugh soundtrack. Yeah, the uh, C- uh, Sisu Society uh, Blue... What is this? Uh, Blue Star Cadets. That song's great. Yeah, no, it's an incredibly gorgeous song, a.k.a. Ned, like a slash Ned's, yeah, theme. Ned's theme. It's beautiful. I'm just saying that maybe, beautiful. Gary, the Royal Tenenbaums soundtrack is better. Take a look here. The Life Aquatic one is how I heard first heard uh, Here's to You by Joan Baez, which I really love. Sure. Um, the uh, Royal... Oh, I, Royal Tenenbaums has a little song called... Hey Jude. 
has a quick one while he's away. Yeah. Um, Lullaby, uh, the Emmett Road song. That's so beautiful. Yeah. In the, a lot the, of ways, the Rushmore soundtrack is also iconic. It's almost like Wes Anderson's good at the soundtracks. <laughs> Gary, you love the kinks. Like, There's a lot of kinks on the yeah. Darjeeling Limited soundtrack. I know. And I heard them and stuff. And I, that's uh, how I, not how I first got into the kinks, but <laughs> I, how I first I got into that record. Stuff. And I walked to strangers for my wedding, my first wedding, uh, by the kinks. Which I wasn't invited to. I didn't know you. Um, I don't accept causality <laughs> as a reason not I to know. invite me to things. Uh, he kind of lost the soundtrack thing at some point. They get like He's a little less good. Not as interested in it at this point. I think he yeah. did all the songs he liked. I, I think that's literally it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. And Mark Mothersbaugh just can't write them fast enough uh, to keep making. Gotta get more. that Johnny Greenwood in there now. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, Greenwood stuff doesn't have the joy. There's no joy to it. It's all misery, but uh, there's a little bit of dark misery sometimes to, but uh, you know, Wes Anderson. You know, stuff. it's probably good to be Gary. I think, huh? Michael Giacchino. Who's Michael Giacchino? He is the guy who does all the Marvel stuff and anything that John Williams doesn't want to do anymore. He took over Star Wars from John Williams. Okay. Yeah, that seems easy. And then they let him even direct a little uh, that, that werewolf by night thing. They may let him make a thing for oh. Marvel because he made so many musics for him. And that thing is good. Like werewolf by night is good. Yeah. Um, no, that, that seems like a good life. It just seems easy, right? Yeah. He's only 56. He's got a lot of time ahead of him. It's not like Robin oh, or I, uh, John Williams, who's fucking one foot in the goddamn crematorium. Oh. Yeah, but Williams is going to live forever. Like, he's always like, I'm going to retire. And then Steven Spielberg's like, I got a no, movie yay. where we brought back Indy. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, 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 oh okay, Steven. Uh, uh, oh, have my dignity. Uh. So in um, your conception of this, John Williams is a panting and desperate nerd who lives for Steven Spielberg's acceptance. He loves daddy's gummies and he'll do anything to get it. So, Gary, in your conception, John Williams <laughs> loves daddy's cummies. And yeah, daddy is Steven Spielberg. anything to get him. Yeah. Spielberg is daddy. Uh-huh. And John and Williams the cummies wants... are... <laughs> um, accolades and respect. Yeah, okay. They Oscars, come out of his dick. Oscars. Millions upon millions of dollars. Money, sure. Money is the ultimate yeah. cummies. <laughs> cummies Gary, rule everything that... around me. Uh, Gary, can I get uh, money is the ultimate cummies as just real clean from you for the ringtone? Sure. sure. Money is the ultimate cummies. There you go, listener. I'm not going to yeah. chop that out so you can turn it into your ringtone, but you better. And nothing can, we can't stop you even if we wanted to. Yeah. Uh, from doing I, I could probably put like a virus in the file. Oh, that man. <laughs> Gary, why don't I put a virus in the cummy <laughs> files? <laughs> we, we haven't done that. We they might, there might, that. people might have things that stop viruses getting through, but they probably don't all have them. And probably not. You can do that. You probably put a virus in an MP3. I bet. I they, let those me Google virus it. guys are so good. They put viruses in yeah. centrifuges. Can you put a virus in an MP3? <laughs> can I get a virus? Uh, in conclusion, while it's possible for MP3 files to contain <laughs> malware, the risks are relatively low compared to other forms of malware distribution. <laughs> not once we get a hold of it. No. No, not oh, yeah. A, not Yeah. Oh my According God. to removefile.com. Yeah, Gary, you did pick up a lot of malware by clicking that, by the way. I, I know I, I just Googled it and read the little preview. Shitty Google, uh the about snippet featured by Google AdSense or whatever finally is doing something good. Stop me from clicking. Gary, the the idea of distributing malware or a virus to the guppy audience deliberately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> really, really, really powerful. Nobody could get mad at us. It's weird that we haven't done it so far. And like, it's honestly, weird, if right? you don't expect it, like that's on you. It's, it's very weird that we haven't yeah. done that. Yeah, I, I was we just uh, we didn't know it could happen until now. Or at least I didn't know, you know, yeah. so yeah, I'm going to look into this. God, look at the, this um, handsome boy. Look at this handsome boy. I love this. This is one of my favorite William bits Jules? of design in this. No. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Oh, we're looking at Blood Puppy. Yeah. Oh, Blood Puppy's phenomenal. I love yeah, him. That's another uh, friendly one. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of. He, this is a really interesting item. Again, uh, since they buffed him, um, he is a little familiar that helps you out. And then once he does enough damage, he goes berserk. And you have to like shoot him until he calms down. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
because of the the night of the eclipse or whatever. Gary, I never read Berserk. Yes. Uh, it's it's very similar to that. Yeah, the uh, Berserk's good. Um, the uh, yeah, no, yeah. I mean it doesn't it doesn't stay good the whole time. Like that's not how it's, long running. It's still going, works. right? It's still going. It is still going. Like he died, and they're they're going to finish it, but it gets stupid. It, like it gets it gets less interesting. Like it hits a climax and keeps going, which is manga dot text, mm-hmm. um, because they're all one story instead of like doing reboots. I understand or the aging, argument. Aging creator dot text. Yes, it, very much aging creator dot text. So Gary, you think it's better uh, that they like the Naruto approach where they just like redid it? I, I think I prefer the Spider-Man approach where the thing just kind of exists and we don't worry about time quite as much. Um, yeah. Gary, someone should go through and count all the time that Peter experiences and see how long he's actually been around. It would be like pretty like, count like all actually count how much. Stuff. Yeah. Canonically. Or like yeah. when later when they're just like, you know, ah, oh, that was a weird month that I was in Sokovia. Yeah. Bullshit like that. Yeah. He would be very old at this point. Oh my God, Gary. What if Peter Parker is a time Lord? What a, do you know about the thing? DC comics did the thing where they, their solution for that was that the main DC universe is our universe, except everyone ages really slowly. No, I was not familiar with that one. Gary, I'm sorry. I yawned. It's not because what you were saying wasn't interesting. It's because what you were saying wasn't interesting. Uh, Gary, uh, it seems like something you'd be interested in. I, um, it is. It's very interesting to me, Gary. I like thinking about this shit. Uh, I did. I did not know that. As far as I knew, DC just handled this by blowing up their universe every. They do that as well. Eight years. This is this was a thing after it when they one of the times they reincorporated their universe. I remember mm-hmm. hearing about it in a podcast and being like, "That's a really weird solution." Like everything's normal except for like eight years is one year to Batman. Interesting, like a reverse dog. Yes. Like Batman is the reverse dog Batman. So Ace the Bat Ace Hound ages like be, me. He'd be Eka the Bat Hound. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Eka the oh. Dolphin? Ah, oh, I wish. Ace the Bat uh, Dolphin. Gary, did you ever read all of the Marvels? I think I lent it to you. Uh, you did loan it to me and I have not read it yet. That's fine. Uh, I, just for the listener, I will recommend Douglas Wolk's book, All of the Marvels, which is his attempt to reckon with the Marvel universe as one continuously told story. Mm-hmm. It's really fascinating. It's a really interesting idea, uh, which is why I want to sound like it. it, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 like, I did, you don't need to police how, how I spend my free time. <laughs> like criticize how I spend my free time. I sometimes have a hard time. Itself, man. Exactly. Like I sometimes have a bad attention span. I don't read as much as I used to. I do other stuff instead. I don't have feelings about it. Gary, are um, you worried that there's a NyQuil executive who's just tearing his hair out right now? <laughs> the, the, uh, I'm gonna the lose numbers that are lifetime. going down and we don't know why. We're going to lose that, uh, that lifetime supply crate I was going to get for talking it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This would be a great sponsor for the show. <laughs> sure would, man. Let's, you know? let's reach out. PodQuill. Um, yeah. The, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Gary, I think we can get through these last three enemies and then start on Globin's next time. Wouldn't that have a nice that, roundness to it? That will have a nice roundness to it. Like me. Uh, this next guy is the spitty. Um, he's also a little worm, but he's frowning and I'm, he shoots out blood I'm shots. Spitty. He's I'm, spitty. Why is it I'm spitty. I'm tainted spitty. See, now, if we had that roundness joke would have really worked with Tainted Spitty because he's round. Yeah, he's big round boy. Uh, and we know how tainted enemies work. They're they got a lot of hell. Ass. Yeah. Uh, he fires chao- chaotic bursts of blood shots in all in directions. all directions. Yeah. What an asshole. Uh, and then fires out rotating rings when you finally kill him. Yeah. And that t- takes forever because he's tainted. And then we got the conjoined Spitty. Uh, which is a uh, spitty with a head on either end, like cat dog. Yeah. Alone in the world was a little cat dog. Yeah. Cat dog. Is that a mother spa joint? What is the cat dog theme song? Oh, maybe. I don't I, I watched a lot less Nickelodeon than you did. I think uh, I cat don't... dog was also a little later. Uh, yeah. 
No, it doesn't I, look like. So you referenced Cat Dog. You made the yes. you introduced Cat Dog into yes. our lives. Today. It's true. I know what Cat Dog looks like. I've thought about the concept of a cat dog. Yeah, I just have and never I, seen I, the cartoon. I simply rattled off a couple of lines from Cat Dog's theme song. The theme song, which by in a good Dennis guess, Dennis M. Hannigan. Be, great guess, that'd be Mother's Ball. I feel like that's like a 50-50 chance. But yeah, it goes cat cartoon. dog, cat dog. Okay. Lone in the world was a little cat dog. Do they ever address how cat dog uses the bathroom? Because I'm looking at the cat dog wiki right here, and it's showing a cat and dog being merged together. So at one point they were a cat and a dog. Uh, I don't think that canonically they were. I think that they are they're a conjoined twins. Nostra Dummy is the seer and the author author of Nostra Dummy's big book of predictions, a minor character in the end. It lo- looks like he is he's predicting that a cat and a dog would be joined as one. I got you. He didn't okay. do it. So you're right. Yeah. yeah, Gary, don't try don't come at like if you try to come at me with cat dog with angry beavers and uh with I don't know, ah real monsters, I will put you in the fucking ground. And then yeah. I will make more ground on top of it. That's, to ensure, that's fair. like, yeah, entomb you in lead. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the Bammer. The Bammer was a. Uh, I just clicked dog. on that too. I was just about to ask you a trivia question. Who was the voice of Shriek Dubois? And it's the Bammer. Well, been... On. So she must have done multiple voices because I'm looking at Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm on on the on the cat dog wiki. Uh, yeah, she's only doing a lot of work for uh, Nickelodeon at the time too. Yeah, Carlos Alas Rocky, uh, known uh, depending on what kind of nerd you are, as either uh, for Reno Nine One One or Rocco's Modern Life. She's a, a phenomenal voice actress. She does so much work in Adventure Time. Yes, like I mean, she's just very you know. We both love the Bammer, but I just mean specifically as a voice actress, she's incredible. Yeah, no, I mean she's a she's fantastic on Adventure Time. Yeah. Anytime you hear a voice that's Maria Bamford, you're like, yeah, it's Maria, but yeah. you, you can tell, but that don't matter. It's really good though. It's like a, yeah. it's like a perfect little comedy voice for those little goblins. Yeah. Yeah. She does oh, little man. voices, Gary. It's very funny. No, she's great. I don't listen God, to I the words. Her. I just hear the funny voice and I laugh and I clap. I love her. Um, yeah. Uh, I love seeing her do stand up a long time ago and uh-huh. having her just be very funny and then have her do stand up and during this kind of like in her power era of like reclaiming shit. Yeah. Uh, and talking about like, just like, you know, I got the shakes, but I'm not going to hide that to make you more comfortable yeah. and stuff. And it was awesome. It was just like, it made me feel very proud. Like in a pair oh, yeah. I remember way. watching, I were watching, I watched, I watched it did the comedians of comedy. And that's where I saw her for the first time, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with that's her Zach Galifianakis, Brian Pazane and Patton, I think. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and just being like blown away by her and then like seeing mm-hmm. her like comedy central thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, her special. And then, uh, God, and then I saw those target ads she did. And then I just lost track of her. Mm-hmm. God, but she was so good on those target ads. Those are, those target ads are great. They're the best target. I mean, ads. that's a joke. The target ads are what, uh, were the immediate catalyst for her mental breakdown that created yes. the shift into her new career. Actually, the best thing she ever made was the, the Maria Bamford show, which she released just on YouTube and is fucking amazing. I still haven't watched that. I was going to watch it. I mean, uh, it's she, just her talking to camera, but it's Maria Bamford talking to camera while in the midst of her mental breakdown, and it's fantastic. Yeah. She's uh, very raw and honest. Yeah. Love her. I need to read her book. Yeah. See, Gary, we both don't read books. See, <laughs> thank God. Oh, you don't think it's that interesting, apparently. Um, <laughs> You're right. I don't. <laughs> the, uh, if, uh, if people, did we get the last one? Gary, they the shut conjoined? down the library near me to rebuild it. I know that actually. Yeah. We drove by that recently. How am I supposed library. to get the Maria Bamford book if the library is all closed? Yeah, you have to go to a different library. And where am I going to get my board games? I don't know, Gary. I don't Gary. know, Gary. I don't know, Gary. Um, what what's conjoined Spitty do? Oh, it's a uh, he's got a cat dog. Um, yeah, on, he got a head on both sides. Cat dog. And he spits in both directions. Gary, you remember cat dog? I do. I always wondered how he used the bathroom. I think a hole opens up in the middle and drops out. That would make a lot of sense. Or just they take turns. You mean puking out each other's shit and piss? Yeah. Yeah, like human centipede. You know? Gary, where would you want to be on the human centipede? Oh, front. <laughs> okay. 
fucking yeah. normie. Yeah. Where where do you want to be? Middle. Middle. Okay. It's both worlds. It, it seems like it's the worst of both worlds to me. How do you figure? Um, you eat a lot of shit and piss. And then you get to shit and piss into into Cole's mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the duck feed centipede. Duck feed centipede. Uh, let's not do duck feed centipede. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, I mean, we've been looking for ethically, something to juice up Duckfest 3. and Ethically, we'd just... have to put Nick in front because I'd be worried about the nutrition. At some point, it would be like when um, Bart lined up all those megaphones. Like yeah. if we put Nick in front and then put like <laughs> took the, the duck feed host from like least IBS to most IBS. <laughs> it'd be like lining up all those megaphones and just like a multiplicative. It'd be like getting a malt malt in Bellatro. Yeah, you know? Gary, I'm I, I I am listening to what you're saying, but I'm also imagining an emotion that no one has ever felt. Can I describe it to you? Yeah, it's the feeling of being the middle guy in the human centipede when the guy in the front dies. Yeah, it's yeah. a complex emotion. It'd be pretty complicated. You would the the you'd have to go like you'd raise your hand so for Doctor Schneider or whatever to fix it. Yeah, like you'd have to be like your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> teacher <laughs> teacher needs some help um oh, and, and in the back of your head you're like am i getting promoted yeah do i get promoted you know uh that boy big dog at that point <laughs> yeah dog. and then the guy yeah uh, huh the guy in back also you know that's one more step to promotion i guess yeah although it's you know if if you i was do your the time. doctor if I was the doctor, I wouldn't let that policy. I would let it. I would randomize it because otherwise, you're encouraging a uh, like biting down, you, biting yeah. down, or just murder, just knife murder. Yeah, um, yeah, you'd want to randomize it, but even then, you'd still want to murder because then you would have a chance at getting to the front. I don't know maybe if you're, you're the human you're centipede doctor. How you? Position. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you. Yeah, I don't know how you stop that from happening. You do a lottery at first, and then that's just how it is. And you can't do like limb amputations because then you've got Gary Butterfield then jerking box, off all over your, your box yeah. Elena all over your centipede. And yeah. you got the, the, the Gary centipede. Because um, ideally you want it crawling around, right? Otherwise you wouldn't have made a centipede. Yeah, no, that's the point of it. I've read the synopses for those movies. I've never seen them. Yeah. But Gary, I don't know. There's a way. There's a way. I'm Maybe AI will fix it. Yeah. Well, we could also, well, you know, uh, AI will probably take care of it. I was going to say we yeah. could watch the movies and find out how they deal with it, but I don't want to watch AI it. It's unpleasant. Uh, if you like this show, <laughs> go to patreon.com slash TV. And next episode, we'll cover even fewer monsters. Gary, uh, can I say, surprisingly, this was a better week than last week. I feel like they were about the same. I liked both weeks. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, it's because I liked, I liked last week, too. Yeah. All right. Um, I feel good about these weeks. I'm kicking the, kicking the caffeine because I'm trying to have more energy now that I'm not taking NyQuil. Uh, it's complicated, and I'm I'm feeling uh, feeling good so far. So I was expecting to feel kind of crappy, but I'm kind of in a good mood. It's being it's putting a nice shine on these episodes. Yeah, Gary, you want a you want a review? I do. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about this one from Barton Funk? Uh, this one came in just a couple days ago. What episode of Retronauts was Will on? I genuinely like to hear what he and Bob have to say about FF16 and that episode's topic, obviously. I sometimes call Guppy the crawling podcast and imagine Will and Gary as elder gods, five out of five. It's it's probably come it's it's probably out. Yeah. Spartan Funk. This, this, it probably came out. This is entirely a very funny uh you know, buzz marketing campaign. It probably came um, out. The star citizen of a podcast. Bob only communicated with me via Twitter DMs, so I just have to keep watching them to see if there's another issue. Yeah, it'll pop up probably. probably. We'll see. If if I uh, I'm going to talk to him in Milwaukee when I get there, and if your episode isn't out, I'll see if I can get you like a a thumb drive with it. <laughs> if they Gary, decide to shelve it, it is funnier now mm-hmm. if you slip him the headshot. Yeah, just remember. <laughs> <laughs> remember this guy did you when you recorded did you have your camera i did but it was positioned uh in a weird way where most of my face was obscured oh (laughs) this is where my mic and my camera are got you got you got you um yeah i'll I'll see if i can slip slip one to him i want to see if i can do it without him noticing i need to learn how to do like pickpocket stuff 
Well, Gary, so can, you like, are talking to the A number one advocate for you learning fucking sleight of hand. I know. And if I loaded the picture into his pocket so he didn't know where it came from, that'd be incredible. Gary, you've made me angry now because now I'm remembering that if you had, when I told you to start learning stage magic, yeah. if you had started then, you would be good at stage magic now. You're trying to manage me like RimWorld or something. <laughs> Like, yeah. like I just turn off when you're not talking to me and all that time is just being wasted. What are, I don't what do else anything are you else. Do? <laughs> I, you know, I do the podcast. I do a uh, podcast with Cole and stuff. Okay. And then an hour a day, out. an hour a day of learning stage mm-hmm. magic. The, uh, and me and me and Liv watched uh, Parabellum. So oh. that happened. Yeah. Did you like Emily's it? great. Uh, she, she loved it. You know, uh, surprisingly she likes, uh, her order is uh three, one, two. She likes one more than two, which I was surprised by, but she loved okay. three. Um, three is really fun. It's, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's full on goofy. Starting with like six perfect fight scenes. And then yeah. the idea of putting John Wick in a knife museum is so funny. It's so um, good. It's, it's, yeah. it has the worst plot out of any of them except yes. maybe four. God, it, it kills me. Like the entire first two thirds of that movie is John Wick going on an epic quest for redemption that ends with him cutting off one of his own fingers. Yeah, his wedding and ring then, finger. Yeah, and then yeah. going back and going, eh, maybe nah. not. Yeah, nah. he just gets convinced that all it took was Ian McShane saying, maybe you shouldn't. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to watch the, uh, the fourth one this weekend. It's going to be great. All right. Uh, no ghost, everybody. No ghost.